All right, hey, this is Dan, this is Bender. We're here today to show you how to properly install a vent tube on a fuel cell. Doesn't matter the fuel cell type, but today you're gonna learn. Welcome back. I'm Dan, this is Bender. We're here today to uh, show you guys how to properly install a vent tube on your fuel cell. Now this doesn't mean it has to be on a later model like a Jeep JK or a JLU. This goes for all fuel cells all vehicle types, whatever. So this fuel cell, obviously we've got windows cut into it. We've got some liquid in here, it's not gas. We don't wanna blow ourselves yeah. up, but we put, <laughs> we put that in here to show you guys how the, the liquid would go around in the vent tube. The vent tube we have installed on here is just a clear tube. You wouldn't want to install that on no, your vehicle. It would, it would it's just right to up. show you when we're leaning the tank, if liquid gets in here, to show you what it's gonna do. Now, Bender, why don't you explain why, you know, what we have going on here at the moment? Well, this tank is actually a JL tank, hence JL's there. We have a vent, a rollover vent in the back side of this tank, so it's actually the worst case scenario. You'd want to vent it right from the center. Some fuel pumps have it there. So what, the, what we're going to show you is we're going to tilt this thing around in every direction, almost, well, 90 degrees, yep. just, just to show you that there's no fluid in the line. So. Well, the purpose of it too, with the tube going all the way around, like the tube is extending out past the tank. Yeah. So, no matter we, which direction, it's the right. highest part. I'm so gonna... the tube would be the highest part. So when you lean it, you know, forward like that, all the liquid's going down here, but still we're not leaning it far enough forward to even get it into. Um, well, the the well, tube's back here. The top, yeah. But yeah, let's go. Let's spin let's it around. This. this thing's pretty heavy, so give me a break. <laughs> We're over 200 pounds on this thing. But now, this is the driver's side of the rig. You're going downhill. This is a, well, you've lost oil pressure at this point. But even with the pressure on it right here and the end of the vent tube, somewhere around here. It's just, right here. Yeah, open vent right here. It's, it's open, but we're still not getting liquid into the into this right now. It is a rollover valve, but we're not rolled yep. over far enough for the rollover valve to come into play at that point. Yeah, you're gonna lose oil pressure long before that rollover valve. That's when you yeah. go completely on your lid. Now, I think a lot more of the issues that people are having is on side hills. You know, when the Jeep's leaning really far over to the side and the tank's turned really far to the side, where you're having on a full tank setup where the, the fuel is forcing itself through the vent tube back into the EVAP system. And that's where we've been hearing back from a lot of people online, mm -hmm. like, they're having issues with the EVAP sucking in fuel. Well, it's because of improper routing of the vent tube. Yeah, from what, typically what we see is they'll run from the vent and they'll run it straight out this way and plumb into the EVAP canister, which sits about 18 inches above the thing, way up here. But if you're on a side hill, of course, it'll run right into it, fill that EVAP canister, and then it, you don't want that. This way, anytime, even if you do get a little trickle in this thing, any flat, it'll run right back in. But as you can see, we move this thing around quite a bit. You want to try to, to go that way? Yeah, let's uh, side hill this thing a bit. So now that's a whole lot of side hill. Yeah, you're <laughs> you're it's heavy. You're out of you're out of oil pressure, but you can see this thing. We're about 80 degrees, 75, 80 degrees, and it's bone dry because the hose is higher than the liquid. Liquid doesn't run uphill. Now. The concept behind this in the actual vehicle, you could route the vent tube on a lot wider circle, you know, around the tank and even gain more of that getting outside of it. Yeah, when um, we do Ultra 4, you usually run it 180 degrees and you go way up on the B pillar and then around a whole 180 and then drop it down. So no matter which way that rig is, even if you're no, on your no, lid, no, it Bender, doesn't you're real close to it. Ultra 4. Ultra 4 oh, okay. is racing, <laughs> off-road racing. So like for some of you guys that are following along, we're talking about more of an, a, in a professional off-roading environment where it's more extreme than what we would be doing, you know, typical off-roading with a Jeep. Yeah. So um, routing the fuel vent lines that way too kind of helps out in a racing scenario in the event of a rollover and things like that. So we're taking that concept that we've used in professional rock crawling and, and off-road racing and things like that to, to show people how to do that on a daily driven yeah, this is this is a really simple you know you do use a regular fuel line but this is like six feet of fuel line as long as it's the the perimeter of the tank um some people i've seen run a discriminator valve um 
But even if you run a discriminator valve, let me explain what a discriminator yeah, valve is. Yeah, I, th I think you should. So yeah. usually it's a high flow. You'll have a one inch inlet in the thing and it looks like a glass tube with some ping pong balls in it. It's a rollover valve. And if you get fluid in it, it raises the ball and shuts fluid the, the fuel off. But the, the problem is if you ride it straight from here over into the discriminator, it fills the discriminator valve full too. So you still need this loop. And you can save yourself 400 bucks because honestly, you don't need it. Yeah. Well, we'll be updating the uh, fuel cell install instructions to show with this loop on there. Um, you know, sometimes myself, Bender, we've been doing this stuff so long. <laughs> like, I guess it's like common knowledge to us, but I know there's a lot of new people out there installing fuel tanks and doing things. So we want to make sure that we're offering, you know, good technical advice and things like that to people. And we felt like the video was the way to go rather than just simply putting it on print and showing someone a picture. Absolutely, and honestly, if there's any question on any of this stuff, we have a complete tech, tech department, so just call the shop and we'll walk you through every step of this, this process. Yeah, so. You wanna, you wanna yeah. sling it and like move it around and really get crazy with it? Yeah, we'll show some different videos right now. I mean, you know, you guys just check it out. Um, you know, one thing too, you know, it seems like every event we go to, we see a JK that's in a position side hill like Aaron's mom uh, recently <laughs> out at Sand Hollow you know that that Jeep was in such a predicament that you know the JK's they'll start blowing smoke if they're if they're in a bad position like that so with that in mind when you have the proper venting I mean you're gonna lose oil pressure you're gonna have other things going on with the engine before the fuel becomes long a problem before, long yeah. before fuel's an issue so again we'll have some other videos covering other technical topics like this if you you guys have anything specific you want to see be sure to leave it in the comments down below uh, it might be bender doing it or a combination of both of us but we just both want to get on here today and go over uh, how to properly vent a fuel tank i hope that helped all right till next time <laughs>